Hello and welcome. It is another rousing edition of the Inside Mizzou Athletics podcast. I am Matt Michaels, Brad Trinago. Hello to you. How's it going? It's going very well. We have uh, a group of people here today to talk about impending national championships. We're excited to talk to uh, some of the members of Mizzou Club Hockey for the second go round in a row here on the podcast because when you win your championship two years in a row in your league, you know, you get some extra love. They also do pretty well against that school to the West, from what I understand. So Generally, you yes. Do that, you, you get some more respect and some more love from this podcast. I, I would think so, too. Uh, we will introduce them after we introduce you to our friends at Shelter Insurance, who power the podcast. Shelter's ranked number one in customer satisfaction for auto insurance in the central region by J.D. Power, five of the last six years. We're your shield. We're your shelter. Also, thanks to Socket and Socket Fiber, which is now available. It's the fastest, most reliable internet combined with local service and simple billing. Contact Socket today for voice data and internet services for your home and business. 1-800-SOCKET-3 or visit socket.net. Well, we are pleased to have three of the MACHA victorious Missouri Tigers here with us as they get ready for their ACHA Division Three National Tournament at the Centene Ice Center just right outside St. Louis, which is super exciting. We welcome in Drew Driscoll, Nick Spolek, and Eli Baumstark here to the podcast today. Gentlemen, congratulations, first of all, and thanks for being here with us. Nick, you're the senior. We'll, uh, we'll start out with you. How has this program progressed during your time here at Mizzou? Yeah, I got here um, the second semester of my sophomore year, so January 2022, and uh, the, the program growth has just been unbelievable. Um, you know, we started out with um, just just a really rough idea of what we what we thought would be success and a lot of guys that wanted to be there and wanted to have that um, but just you know didn't have the structure that we necessarily needed um, but just with a lot of hard work from our guys and a lot of just commitment um, you know we've been able to turn this thing around not only on the wins and losses but um, just organizationally too so it's been a great change um, you know we're we feel like we're set up for success for for many years in the future you know, this is uh, a success that you guys, really it has been organic. And Eli, I wonder if you can speak to it. You know, all, all of you guys have returned, but to see the growth that you guys have had in just the local community of Columbia and Mizzou at large, after putting in the work to get there last season and put yourself on a national stage, to see it blossom the way it has, especially this year, I feel like it's continued to grow. How is that rewarding for you guys? Because it's not just about the games that you play. It's about so many other things for your club team. Yeah, it's really been an amazing journey. I uh, also transferred here my sophomore year like Nick, and I didn't really know what to expect. And starting out, it really wasn't like it is today. I mean, we really have grown a lot, and I think it's amazing to see how, how good our hard work, hard work has paid off. Yeah, Drew, and we'll bring you in too, kind of talking on that that theme because it, it really is interesting to me the work that, that you guys have to put in, you know, behind the scenes just to, to make your program possible. It's not like an athletic department is is sending you funding because it's a club team. And we were talking with some of your teammates from from last year's team that you know basically we're going door to door with to area businesses to raise money and sponsorships and support. When you guys have been doing that same type of work in terms of fundraising, have you found that it's been easier to try and get that kind of support because of the success you guys have had in previous years? So I, I really do think that the success plays a huge role in it, but our e-board this year did a really good job of um, community outreach, making sure to reach out to like younger kids especially. Um, like we at the beginning of the year I know did the, uh, what do we call it? Where it was Tigers Rookies. Yeah, Tigers Rookies. So like we had a whole bunch of younger kids come out. Um, and show them kind of how to hold a stick, play hockey, what it's all about. Um, so that was huge, and that really brings a lot of our fan base. Just like I know the parents love to come watch it, but the kids love it even more. Um, but, I mean, I, I, I've been on the team longer than these two. I, I started my freshman year. Um, I didn't transfer in, but I was on the team when we were kind of just in shambles. Um, and, I mean, the guys, the guys loved playing hockey, obviously, but it was more so like just for fun in their eyes. Whereas the year after, when we came in after COVID, um, we we tried to develop it more, had a lot more competitive outlook on it. Um, and I mean, it, we we found a, a group of guys that just genuinely love the sport and have a lot of fun playing. So um, that also helped grow the the team and organization to where it's at right now. Drew, what what switched in your mind? Was it just the fact that everybody had that year off, and you know, people who were there said? 
well, hey, if we're going to do this, let's go ahead and do it right? Or, or was there something else amongst that group that led to the things that have now followed in the years that have come and, and the success that you've had, not just on the ice, but in growing things off the ice as well? Uh, I mean, I'd say I'd say the friendships for the most part, because the first year was kind of like we had some um, guys on the team that weren't as committed, and you could kind of tell that. And then um, the second year kind of sifted those guys out, and we got a lot of new talent that came in, the, the younger guys that were invited by other St. Louis guys that came in here, um, really just kind of developed the, that competitive edge. Um, and I mean, everyone's just so friendly with each other that like we love hanging around with each other. That like practice isn't practice; it's it's we're going to have fun with each other every Monday and Tuesday. So, Nick, can you go a little bit more into the the recruiting aspect for you guys? I mean, it sounds like from Drew what, what Drew was mentioning, a lot of it is word of mouth. But what what is that process like to to bring in not just people so you have enough bodies, but also people that are the right fit that are within the culture that you guys are trying to build? Yeah, and that's one of the most stark differences that we feel we've experienced with the the program growth is it used to be, um, you know, people would show up for the tryout. It would be word of mouth trying to get guys in. But now we have guys organically coming to us wanting to come and play for the team. And we've had to bolster our recruiting efforts. We have recruits from New Hampshire, California, Texas, Vancouver, British Columbia, just specifically. Um, a bunch of different recruits coming in, which is helping us. Um, but with that, we it's our job as the leadership group to um, instill the good cultural values that we feel like has made us successful. So in doing that, um, it, it's kind of a tough balance between we want to be able to recruit and find the best talent possible, but also keep the, keep the culture um, the way it is. And we've been able to do that really well. And like Drew said, just being able to, to realize that it's, 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 a, it's a family and treating it like that has uh, done leaps and bounds for our programs. But that said, you know, we are very glad that we are becoming in a very attractive option, not only domestically, but um, out of the country as well. And, you know, that's something that we know is just going to keep growing. Well, everybody who wants to play is going to find a place to play eventually, right? And so to have that opportunity and to grow it the way that you guys have leads to some unique opportunities. I mean, there are not many who could say that they got to play outside under the pavilion uh, as you guys did this past year against St. Louis University's uh, club team uh, and got a 5-4 to four win, by the way, at the Centene Center back uh, on February the 3rd. Eli, what, what was that experience like to kind of have the – I don't know, the winter classic feel modified, but to get to play in that unique setting earlier this season. It was a ton of fun. Um, obviously, being in St. Louis, it was really nice for me because I'm from St. Louis, so I think almost all of my extended family was there. So it was really great to see everybody in the crowd because a lot of them can't come to every single game. And then uh, playing against SLU was a lot of fun because I have a couple friends on the team, and just in an environment like that where it's still competitive but so beautiful, it was really is pretty amazing. Eli, was there a, a specific point this season? Maybe it was that game, but was there a specific point this season where you realized, okay, not only is this team good enough to, to win the MACHA again, but it's a team that has a, an opportunity to be seeded in the national tournament and hopefully make a deeper run than even last year? Um, it was actually this summer. I texted Nick. We had uh, a couple players reach out to us and say we want to come, and I texted him and said this is – this is our year, and uh, I actually, if you guys have heard of the Hockey House Pod, I don't know if I could talk about it, but just a small <laughs> yeah, fine. club hockey uh, or a like college hockey podcast um, that's run by former players. I DM'd them on Instagram and said we were finishing in the top five this year, like I think it was like May thirtieth. So obviously I. Yeah, he's Told got the timestamp for yeah, sure. I do. <laughs> he's got the receipts. So when you go ahead and, and put that out, Drew, I'll ask you. Your teammate goes out and makes it very public saying, hey, here's how we're going to finish. How do you respond as his teammate to that? Oh, I, I, I'd say I was pretty confident in the same answer. Um, I mean, last year we, we had a good run at it, and all the guys that were returning were just as hungry as they were last year. And uh, the new guys, like he said, I mean, they're, they're super talented, and it's really fun to play with them. So, um, I mean, I, I from the get-go was as confident as they both were too, so – Nick, kind of the same question for you. Did you do you feel the same way even before the season started? That like, oh man, we have we have top five national potential. 
Yeah, and I think that we obviously have the the talent and skill, but it was just more of the the culture. I mean, is is the group going to be close enough to make that run? And I believe um, absolutely. Uh, we just have a really a really special group, guys that want to be there, want to be able to compete, and win, and that's gonna, um, you know, I think that in those types of situations carries a team to to victory more often than not. But uh, a quick point that I wanted to make around about the Winter Classic game. Um, we had 1,400 in attendance for that game, um, which was almost a sellout. And it was probably 95% Mizzou fans, with all due respect to, to SLU. But for us, that's an opportunity that we feel like we're now attracting the St. Louis market even more. And like when the basketball team was playing Seton Hall in Kansas City, it felt kind of that same feel for us of we are going to a different city and we're attracting a, you know, a fan base of 1,400 people. But that was such a special moment for us and definitely a point um, from a business opportunity that we want to continue to do is going to those those markets and playing in those types of games, being exposed to the fan base as much as possible. Well, you've had to play that team from the West a few times at, at Capel Dahmer more often than not, and going to St. Louis to play SLU or someone else. I mean, uh, the opportunities are there in this state for hockey, but people who are maybe not as plugged in aren't as aware of it on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, can any one of you speak to how maybe – it's grown since you've been involved in the hockey community in this state and and where it's gone and where it might be headed yeah i mean i can i can speak on it the biggest opportunity facing our program is is leveraging our the university of missouri and our and our program to reach the biggest audience that we can in missouri we want to be the ones that change hockey in missouri um, and we've been able to do that through these types of games but also through our outreach on social media our community outreach which is one of the biggest organizational pillars that we feel like we have um, but we've just tried to make it make it more accessible through Mizzou Hockey TV um, our YouTube platform our social media platform our newsletter so we're just trying to do everything we can to make the University of Missouri which arguably and I in my opinion is the biggest university in the Missouri and one of the biggest universities in the Midwest leveraging that um, to, to continue to grow hockey in the area it, Drew, kind of continuing with that theme a little bit. So you guys, it, can, maybe explain a little bit how the dynamic works with the ACHA. So you guys are considered Division Three there. Is it? How does that process work? Is, does that just for the dynamic of the club you have? Is that the right fit in terms of the division, or is there a possibility that down the road you could go up divisions? How, how do the how do the divisions work in ACHA? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so as as I know. D2 and D3, there isn't as big of a jump talent-wise. It's more structure of your organization. Um, we're actually making the jump next year to Division II, um, especially because we have everything together. I know we got bumped down in, I don't know, 2016, a while ago, and the club uh, was having some issues. But we're back together, and we're making sure everything's flowing properly. So um, D2 is going to be super exciting next year. Our, our next goal is to move up to D1. Now, that one's going to be um, a big jump talent-wise. We just need to continue what we're doing with the outreach, um, fundraising, especially just bringing in a lot of skill and talent. Yeah, and it probably helps, I would imagine, and maybe, Eli, you can speak to this, being able to interact with teams from across the country that maybe you wouldn't normally get a chance in your regular season to interact with. How do you feel that helps not only strengthen you guys as a unit, but also get the word out that, hey, Mizzou hockey is someone that's going to be here on the national stage and willing to play. Yeah, I think uh, every these tournaments and uh, just opportunities like next year we might be playing in like a showcase, um, it really gets our name out there because results against teams across the country is really what stand out the most. And uh, every team has an Instagram, a Twitter, and when they see uh, the other the other team's fans see a loss to Mizzou on the, their their homepage is Instagram. It gets our name out there. So. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. What, what did you guys learn, speaking of you know exposure to, to teams at a national level, what do you think that you guys learned from the experience at Nationals last year? Picked up a couple wins in pool play before uh, you know eventually bowing out there, but got a couple wins under your belt. How does that experience and that exposure, you think, help you this time around? Um, I honestly think that it's probably going to calm us down a little bit. I know we got our first two wins against um, Central Michigan, and it was, I'm blanking right now, Air Force. Air Force. Um, and then we lost to Hope. But um, when we played Hope, who was a huge team at the time, um, I think we came out a little jittery um, and really flat-footed. And I think that just kind of gave us the experience that we needed, especially going into this year's, um, to stay calm and just play how we usually play. So, 
Yeah, and uh, you mentioned the Air Force Academy, and that will be a team in your pool play coming up at the Centene Community Ice Center. Uh, March 7th, you face Michigan State, the 8th against Central Maine Community College, and then Air Force. It's not like they take it easy on you guys. You play three games in three days, which is not a usual hockey grind except for events like this. Um, Maybe, Nick, you can speak to this. How do you guys physically prepare for three games in three days? Because you play plenty of back-to-backs. That's not unusual. But it's that third game, and then I imagine beyond advancing into the bracket, that really tests the medal of a hockey club. Yeah, definitely. It's uh, it's absolutely a grind, and, and fortunately most of us got to experience that at the, at the national tournament last mm-hmm. year of understanding how uh, that takes a toll physically on your body. But I think just our preparation and how we um, are preparing, you know, trying to – Make sure that we have adequate rest and our recovery is doing um, the most that we can and uh, just just mentally and physically preparing as best as possible. That way we're, we're ready to roll come uh, Thursday. Eli, I think it was announced, I believe, December of 2022 was what the announcement came that St. Louis was going to be the host for this year's tournament. So as a St. Louis guy, what was that like for you when you saw that this event was going to be going back to St. Louis? Oh, I was pretty psyched. Um, I think it gives us an opportunity to gain more of those fans. I know Tickets are sold through the ACHA, but there's, uh, they're not terribly expensive, I don't think. And say we make it to the championship, it's only a two-hour, less than two-hour drive from here, and then there's a huge pool of Mizzou alum in St. Louis that could also attend. So I was really excited for the opportunity to play in front of a lot of people. Yeah, and you've had that chance, of course, outdoors over there. I, I wonder, and we can ask each of you individually, we'll start uh, on the end with you, Drew. What's been your favorite moment from this season in terms of either a game you played or something on the ice? Um, that's a tough question. There's a, there's really a lot of good moments this past year. I mean, uh, I know you guys brought up the game against SLU at the Winter Classic that we did. That was really, really freaking cool. Um, I played in an outdoor game when I was 10 years old, so I haven't played an outdoor game since, and that was like one of the coolest rinks I think I've ever played at. Um, obviously, winning the Macho, is always going to be one of the coolest things ever, especially beating KU in the championship. Um, but I think the the biggest struggle and the most exciting game for this year was beating Arkansas in the matchup playoffs because um, that was kind of the big hump that we had to overcome this whole season. We played them uh, two times earlier in the season at home, two times earlier at um, their home, which their rink, uh, shout out to them, I mean, they, they really draw a huge crowd, and it's really tough to play them at home. They get a lot of energy. Um, so, I mean, playing them a fifth time was just the hardest thing that we had to do, and I think that, like, we were all so pumped up for it, and beating them was just – it felt so good, you know. Yeah, Nick, what about for you? What, what stands out from this season on the ice? Yeah, obviously winning those games um, – Super, super incredible for the season. But I think just our home games this year, uh, we sold out eight of nine Friday games. And I think the, the Friday game that we didn't sell out, was a, it was probably 90% attendance. But um, selling out all of our home games. But um, our last home series against Dallas Baptist on January 26th, that Friday, um, about 12, almost 1,200 fans were in the building. It was jam-packed. You couldn't find a seat, which was incredible, and we won that game with two minutes left, five to four. Um, and I was on the ice for the goal that Andrew Knapp scored, um, and just the roar from the crowd was was incredible. And, and it was just the foreshadowing of just what we've done to gain a fan base to have at our games, and and how that's going to progress in the future it meant a lot more than just the goal and, and the roar of the crowd. It it just kind of symbolized what we've been able to become as a program. That's a tough act to follow, Eli. But what stands out to you? <laughs> um. I, I guess I'll say the the four games in a row that we played at home, two against Arkansas and then two against Missouri State, mm-hmm. two uh, huge division rivals, especially Arkansas being an SEC co- uh, opponent in Mizzou Athletics. I think it really is – it means a lot more. So those two games were – there was probably over 2,000 people the whole weekend mm-hmm. to watch, and we beat them both times. Pretty – it was – they were both pretty good games, so it was really amazing. And then the next weekend – same exact story, Missouri State, huge rival. And we same thing, beat them both times, and it was pretty amazing. 
Yeah, lots of good stuff. And again, the fourth seed in the national tournament coming up this weekend in St. Louis. And I know, at Nick, at least on, on Twitter, it's at M-I-Z Club Hockey if you want to follow you guys. And I, and I saw you guys have a link to a, a GoFundMe page to, to help you guys out with some expenses. I know that I, I believe you guys raised about twenty k for the trip to Boston mm-hmm. for last year's nationals. And that's obviously understandable. you got to get out there. you got to have hotels and, and all the other stuff. Uh, if people do want to check you guys out, kick in a little money to the GoFundMe, what does that go to this time around? Yeah, it goes to the the same thing, just lodging, food, um, tra- you know, transportation, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so we've been really fortunate to have the, the the donations come in thus far, and it means the absolute world to us. But um, you know, all of that all that kind of stuff is just going towards um, being able to have lodging, have food, and, and all that kind of stuff. The necessities for the national tournament. Yeah, you, you definitely, if you are even having the slightest consideration, you should really check. Mizzou Club Hockey out in the ACHA National Tournament. And again, uh, the schedule is starting on Thursday. 5.15 is the scheduled puck drop against Michigan State. 8.15 on Friday night against Central Maine Community College. And then 5.15 again on Saturday against the Air Force Academy. And hopefully more from there after a successful run in pool play for the Missouri Tigers. And we thank them very much for joining us here on the Inside Mizzou Athletics podcast. Drew Driscoll, Nick Spolak, Eli Baumstark. Thank you, gentlemen. Can't wait to see what the results are this weekend. And uh, once again, uh, congratulations on all the success you guys have been able to have on the ice and away from it. Thank you so much. Thank Thank you, guys. Mm -hmm. So that's Mizzou Club Hockey. Basically, in a nutshell, we got a few of them. We got a whole forward <laughs> shift right here if we want it. We'll take a timeout. Brad and I will come back with some more happening around Mizzou Athletics after you hear from our friends at Shelter Insurance. <laughs> 